All right, Coach Reed just made a couple of player announcements and roster moves at his presser today, and there was enough that he announced I wanted to make a quick video about it, so let's talk about it. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs, so make sure to sub if you're new, hit that like button if you're ready for some freaking turkey nom nom tomorrow, and let's get into this video because Andy Reid just stepped down from a presser roughly 30 minutes ago or something when I'm recording this video, and there was quite a bit right at the beginning of his presser that I want to dive into, a lot of player updates and some roster moves worth talking about. First off, Joe Tooney's not going to practice with an ankle aggravation, so... That's not good, not great, but hopefully he trends upwards and starts on Sunday. We'll have to wait and see about that. Kadarius Tony will not practice with the hamstring injury. This has been an issue for Kadarius Tony. If I pull up his injury history here, since being in the NFL, just injuries in general, also hamstring injuries too. In August of 2021, he had a thigh hamstring strain grade two. He missed most of training camp with that. Later in the season in November, of 2021, missed four games due to a quad injury. Then in December, he missed three games due to an oblique injury. And then he underwent minor knee surgery earlier this offseason. So the knee's fine, but he did have that. But then he tweaked uh, the same hamstring in practice on September 15th of this year. So he did play three days later, but then he missed weeks three through seven with the Giants. Obviously, then the Chiefs traded for him and got him. But then he went down last Sunday and hurt his hamstring. I don't know if it's the same exact one. I would assume that it is. You can re-aggravate these things. And I think the hope is that working with the Chiefs medical team, the Chiefs athletic trainers, like they're, they're good. They're great at their job. One of the best in the business. So I don't know what the rest of the season holds for Kadarius Tony, but this was more than just a this season now move for Kadarius Tony, he's got two and a half years on his rookie deal with a fifth year option that they could pick up. So the biggest thing for Kadarius Tony is he just needs to get healthy and the chief staff needs to do whatever they can to make that happen. So he's not on IR or anything like that, but we definitely will have to monitor the situation. So I do wish the best for him and hope he gets well soon because I like him out there on the field. Next up, Clyde edwards Lair. He is also <laughs> familiar with injuries. He has been placed on to IR with a high ankle sprain and will miss games against the Rams, Bengals, Broncos, and Texans. At least those games, a minimum of four games, could be longer. And CEH, like I said, he's no stranger to injuries or injured reserve. He was on injured reserve last season with uh, an MCL sprain early October, and he missed five games. And then even back to his rookie year, he missed three games near the end of the season with an ankle sprain and a hip injury. So CEH, Kadarius Tony. Lots of injuries. I do wish the best for both of them. It's never ideal. You know, CEH a couple weeks ago kind of took a backseat to the rookie Isaiah Pacheco getting more reps than him and, uh, you know, kind of had his chance last game to do his thing, got hurt after just a couple rushes, and he's going to be out at least four weeks. So that means Isaiah Pacheco is him right now. That's what the video yesterday that I made was about. And uh, some people were saying, well, Cole, you said last or the week before McKinnon was the best running back. Yes, that is my thoughts. McKinnon is the best running back on the Chiefs right now for the Chiefs offensive scheme, meaning he's the best pass blocker that they have. He's the best back at catching out of the backfield and he can run, but he's not the best just pure dedicated running back. And all I said in last night's video about Pacheco is he took another man's job and it was official because I knew that CEH was going to be placed on IR or at least had a very high suspicion of the case. And yeah, that means Ronald Jones is going to suit up. He'll be activated. There has been some confusion about Ronald Jones that I want to clear up. A lot of people think he's actually on the practice squad, but it's not true. He's on the 53-man roster, just has not been activated for game day. I think NFL teams... Even though they have a 53-man roster, they can only activate 47 or 46 players. I can't remember off the top of my head. So there are, as always, five or six players that will not suit up for a game even though they're on the roster. That's been Ronald Jones every single week. But per Andy Reid today in his presser, he said there's a chance Ronald Jones plays a legitimate chance. He needs all the protections down and timing of the runs, but he's been studying and working on it all. So he shouldn't have a problem with that. Now, even if... Rojo suits up. The question is, will he play? Some people are predicting that he's going to go off, have a breakout game. 
I, I don't know. I mean, two weeks ago, Clyde Edwards Elaire suited up and played four snaps on offense, two passes were thrown his way, and he ran the ball zero times. So Ronald Jones could legitimately suit up and run the ball zero times. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I would like to see if Rojo can get the ball a couple times, but I would expect Isaiah Pacheco, the rookie, seventh round draft pick from this year to get the majority of the reps moving forward. Unless something crazy happens and Rojo just has a hot hand and then they want to give it to him. But right now, in my opinion, which is why I made this video that I did last night, Isaiah Pacheco is that guy and it's now his job to lose. Okay, more moves happened. The Chiefs signed tight end Kendall Blanton back to the practice squad. He's been there a couple of times this year and he was released from the Rams yesterday, so the Chiefs jumped on that immediately because tight end Jordan Franks is now on the practice squad injured list. He broke his hand in practice. I would assume it was this week. Could have been last week, maybe. But either way, tight end Jordan Franks now on the practice squad injured list. They signed Kendall Blanton back to the practice squad. And another roster move they made after they placed CEH on IR, it clears his spot off the roster. Then they activated Offensive tackle Lucas Niang to the 53. Andy Reid mentioned that he's worked hard, lost weight, specifically a couple Twinkies worth in regards to how much weight he lost. So CEH placed on IR. Basically, Lucas Niang takes his roster spot for now. And I don't know if he's going to get any actual reps in the game on Sunday. We'll just have to keep an eye on that. You know, how many reps will Andrew Wiley get? compared to Niang, I would assume Andrew Wiley gets majority of the reps and they sprinkle Niang in. If they don't do it this Sunday, they'll start doing it in the future and just maybe trying to work him in and see how he does. And if so, maybe they'll increase his snap count, increase his workload. That's a big injury to come back from, but he's been activated to the 53 and not placed on IR for the season. And the Chiefs medical staff, again, top notch, top tier. I think they believe Lucas Niang is ready to go. So, Let's freaking get it popping because uh, the tackles have been struggling this year, to say the least. Another thing that was mentioned in Andy Reid's presser is that Juju Smith-Schuster is trending upwards from clearing concussion protocol, but needs to complete a practice, I believe, to fully complete it. Now, he could very well play this Sunday, and Andy Reid made it seem like he was trending that way, but there is a small chance, or some chance at least, that they sit him for one more week to rest him and just make sure he's doubly good. Because Matt Stafford, for example, he might not be playing this Sunday against the Chiefs, so they might use one of their backups or third stringers. I think one of their backups is even banged up a little bit, but listen to this. This is the second time in three weeks that Matt Stafford was evaluated for a concussion during or after a game on November 8th. Two days after a loss at Tampa Bay, Stafford was put in the NFL's concussion protocol, so he sat out November 13th in their loss to the Cardinals, but was cleared from the protocol Friday, then played in the game against the Saints, but he left the matchup to be evaluated for another concussion. He initially sought medical attention on the sidelines, then went to the locker room in the third quarter with backup Bryce Perkins replacing him under center. And then, uh, what, a few days later, they put him back in the concussion protocol only three days after exiting it. So I'm saying all this to say, Yes, Matt Stafford is probably not playing because that's not what this video is about, but Juju Smith-Schuster, they want to be extra careful with this guy. So you don't want to go and have another risk another concussion so soon after just having one. So that's why they could very well sit Juju Smith-Schuster out. I mean, Juju's concussion was gnarly. He was out cold. I think Chris Lammons is also trending upwards of playing. I would imagine cornerback Chris Lammons plays and while Juju Smith-Schuster has a higher chance of sitting out and resting for one more week. But that's to be determined. That's not something that Coach Reed specifically spoke about. I just wanted to let you guys know kind of my thoughts there. But there you go. A flurry of moves, a practice squad signing, somebody placed on practice squad, injured list. Then you had CEH being put on IR, Lucas Niang getting activated to the roster, a lot of freaking moves going on. Then you have to watch all the injuries that are starting to pile up. You know, Andy Reid said that Kadarius Tony and Tooney won't practice, but what about Jalen Watson with his hand? What about Juan Thornhill with his calf? You know, these are other injuries that happened in the game last week as well. We're going to have to monitor all of those guys. And then you can't forget about this. Last week, Jarek McKinnon was limited all week. And cornerback Legereus Sneed was limited all week as well, even though they played last Sunday. 
we got to keep an eye on all this. There was a lot of moving pieces. So I wanted to do this quick hitter video that's now not so quick as I'm looking at the overall recording time. But there was so much in this presser that I was like, screw this. I'm not waiting for later in the day. I'm going to record all of this now and keep you guys up to date and in the know. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to sub. If you haven't, hit that like button. And if I don't see you again, because I'm not going to do a video tomorrow for Thanksgiving, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Eat some turkey for me, maybe some pumpkin pie. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.